as much as we have began having rising numbers when it comes to the COVID, there is a conversation on all the monies that we're asking for to solve the problem. Exactly where is it going to come from? And even if it's a loan, one day we're going to be paying back. Revenue should also be one of the things that we're thinking about. And so if revenue is leaking elsewhere, we've got to make sure that we plug the holes right now that we're actually also looking for money. One of the places that the finance minister was proposing that we take a look at um, when it comes to oil and gas sector is actually the heritage fund but why dip your hand in a sovereign um, wealth fund which is supposed to be um, slated for the future and so we're here to have a discussion on the oil sector the mining sector the extractive sector and really how we can drill down on drawing a lot of revenue whilst we are really cash strapped in these times. I'm here with Dr. Steve Manteo. He is actually uh, the co-chair for Gaty. Well, doctor, we know that this was a major campaign promise and um, we're in election 2020. Um, this may not be the time, for example, for them to want to cut out free SHS. But should we go back to the drawing board after 2020 to say that, look, having looked at our budgetary overruns, deficits that have come as a result of COVID, and we not wanting to uh, lose the gains that were made in terms of macroeconomic fundamentals, can we take a look at this policy again? Yes, I think we should. And let me make the point that I perfectly understand what the government is trying to achieve with free SHS, and it's for good reasons. What we're trying to do is to democratize access to education, which is good. But in doing that, we are trying to use the equality principle to achieve equity. This is not done. The problem on our hands is one of inequity or inequitable access to education, where only the rich and those who can afford are able to assess secondary education in this country. So we want to address that. Yeah. The way you address that is to use, what do you call it? Equitable instruments, or instruments that achieves equity by discriminating in terms of who benefits from free SHS. The argument has been made that how do you define the poor in this country? That's a difficulty. And that is why, because we cannot target the poor, we need to actually have a blanket social intervention for all, including those who are filthy rich and can afford to pay for their children. Yes. Now, my advice um, or my response to this is that there is a very simple, fundamental way of targeting the poor with free SHS in this country that can save money to do other things to enhance our developmental efforts. And it is this. Free SHS must be available only to children who pass through the public school system, what we call the CITO. And you find that all those who can afford to pay international school fees, okay, can afford to pay secondary school because it's less. Yeah. And again, you find that the very poor, who whether they want or not, cannot afford international schools, but have to send their children to the public school, will be the beneficiaries of free SHS. That will save us some money. Now, we missed out on some of these suggestions because the opportunity was not created to harness views and ideas from the general populace. I recall that anybody who spoke or has some advice for the free SHS was immediately classified as being an opponent yeah. of this good initiative. Yeah. So in, in, in that process, trying to politicize the implementation, we lost, out, we lost out on a lot of good advice. I'm pretty sure there are others who also have very useful advice in terms of how we Can efficiently manage this and make the free SHS sustainable. For me, sustainability is an issue. Yeah. This initiative will not have a future if we don't have a cross-party buy-in. The MPP government will not remain in power forever. 
So in the event of having an NDC government, what happens to the free SHS? I'm pretty sure Ghanaians and the government that is implementing the free SHS would want the initiative to stay. If we all want it to stay, then this is a time to begin brainstorming in terms of the financing arrangement. What kinds of financing arrangement will make the initiative sustainable? For now, relying on petroleum revenues makes it highly precarious. Today, we have a, re a revenue shortfall in the petroleum sector of up to about 6 billion Ghana cities. This is not good news for free SHS. Petroleum prices have actually declined, has actually declined from around $70 per barrel to about $20 per barrel. This is a huge fall in expected revenue. It's currently at $32. Well, good. So but it's still so very low. And therefore, how then do you make up for the budgetary shortfall in terms of financing the free SHS? That's right. So we need to really brainstorm on how we diversify funding for this laudable initiative.